Hi and welcome to Real Clear Fetish Talks, Real Clear Play, a podcast, Instagram Live, chat, um, where we talk about everything sober, kinky, and everything in between. So this week uh, it will be my third TikTok guest, um, but I'll bring him in right away. Hello. Howdy. <laughs> howdy. <laughs> Great. I know. It's very American of me to say howdy. Of course, of course. Um, well, welcome to the live. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous, but that's all right. It's okay to be nervous. Um, but we'll start with the four standard questions at the start and just to set the conversation going and then we'll just see where we go. So to start with, what do you prefer I call you names, pronouns and title? Uh, so name, you can call me Chris, uh, pronouns, he, him, unicorn of doom, whatever you want to call me. Um, and then a title, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Fantastic. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, okay. This is always a fun part. I'm not real good about talking about myself, but let's see. Uh, I'm a Gen Xer. So I was born in the seventies. I know uh, th this is why. I was born in the 70s. Um, I have been married for 20 years. Our 20-year anniversary is coming up October 20th. Uh, I can't believe it's been 20 years. Uh, I am a big, giant goofball. Uh, so you you watch me over on TikTok, and you see that all the time. Um, but within that goofiness and within that craziness that I that is my true personality, uh, I try and really talk about mental health and mental health awareness. And I, I'm really trying to expand kind of in all of my, all of my spheres of influence. Um, I'm hoping to get this like virtual Venn diagram of everything that all of my groups that kind of intersect into one. Uh, because I, I just really believe that, you know, we as humans, and it's my biggest belief, is that we can uh, love each other no matter what our backgrounds are, because we're all human. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, completely sober, clear-headed, or social drinker? Oh, no. Uh, well, I don't know how to put that. I am sober 99.999% of the time. Only time I ever take a drink is either on New Year's Eve and it's one glass of wine or our birthdays, which is usually one glass of wine. Um, I don't drink at all. Uh, alcohol, alcoholism runs in the family. So uh, I pretty much know that if I were to start more than one, it wouldn't be pretty. And mm -hmm. I really love remembering what happened. So, I mean, my, my memory, because I'm 51, is starting to go anyway. So I love remembering what happened. So yeah, I don't drink at all. I actually don't do any drugs at all. Um, I was one of those weird uh, 80s kids who just the whole dare thing kind of got in my head. So I don't do any of it. I'm like, okay, whatever. Fantastic. It's, 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 it's important that people realize that people don't drink for various of reasons. Right. That being like you mentioned, alcoholism runs in your family. Uh, I definitely had a very weird relationship with alcohol because I, at one point, lived with my mom's alcoholic partner in the house. So I had a very, very weird interaction with alcohol at a very young age. So I fully get why you would come to that decision. And, 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 and a lot of people don't realize that alcoholism, if, you, if your family has it, you're prone to it because it can right. be inherited. Yes. Right. And I've had one experience where I got really drunk when I was 21 or 22, where I drank an entire case of Bud Light. Bud Light is gross, by the way. An entire case of Bud Light with no food. And so I ended up throwing up for about four hours and then it turned into blood, throwing up blood. So I was like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> for, never doing that again. So yeah, it's, it's just better for me that way. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, what is clear play to you and why is it important? Uh, it's really just, it's understanding. And I think that's part of the reasons why I don't drink or I don't do any kind of enhancements to when I'm, when I'm playing is because I like to feel every sensation. I like to remember everything that happened. I like to 
Um, you know, if there are boundaries set up, I really like to get to, to, to know that point in myself where that boundary happens. Because I feel like if you are on any kind of enhancements, which I'm not downplaying people who do that, that's great that you do that and you, and you know where you can go. But for mm -hmm. me, it's like, I have to be fully like conscious of what's happening. Even if I can't hear or see or whatever, um, there's always that little twick of the finger or that little moan that lets the other person know that, hey, you've reached that limit. And uh, I think if you're kind of, you're, you're, you're drunk or you're buzzed or you're high, you may miss some of those signs and not realize how far you've been pushed. And that, that can cause a lot of issues. I, I've definitely been in situations where I've pushed a puppy too far at a club where I was too drunk and he just had a complete meltdown with me. Valid. He was right. in, his, in his right to have a meltdown with me. Um, but it was not a good situation. But it is completely true. You, you miss key um, markers of when you're interacting with someone. Um, but as said, it's, it's not, a, a, we definitely not, there's, this podcast is not out to demonize people who do, do indulge in drugs and so on. It's just about, about um, safe practices. Absolutely. Right. right. And I've had, you know, it's funny because when we used to play on a regular basis, uh, we played with a, a, a master when we lived in Colorado who, it's really strange because we, we had lots of warnings about him. Like lots of, hey, don't get involved with him. Don't play with him. He takes things too far. He's actually, you know, caused wounds on people. And we kept hearing this over and over and over. And it was interesting with us. And I don't know if it was a respect thing or we just kind of laid the rules down. But he never, like he would push us, but he never got to that point where we didn't see any of that, you know, kind of those rumors or any of that that play where it was, I mean, he definitely pushed my limits. I was like, oh, well, all right. But it was like he knew when to stop. So that was that was always interesting for me that there were like two sides to him. Yeah, it's, 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 it's important. You can push people to a certain extent, but then you have to pull them back in and make assure right. them. And so on. I, I had a lovely boy over on the Friday where I definitely pushed his boundaries, but I made sure that he was present and, 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 and I checked in with him regularly just to make sure right. you're still okay. Um, right. I was very proud of him because he definitely went further than he even thought he could himself. Uh, but that's, if you're in here and you right. keep them engaged there in your head, then you can actually go a lot further than you actually expect you can. For sure. And as the, as the boy's bottom or whatever, that's when you really have to dial in that clearness and say, okay, how far can I push myself? Like, does this really hurt? Does it still feel good? You know, just because I can't move or whatever. That's when, you know, that's when you really have to kind of be in that really good mindset. Cause if you, if like, if I'm, you know, thrown down and all sorts of stuff happening, I need to have that clear motion to be like, okay, this is still fun. Cause when it mm -hmm. stops being fun, that's when things start to happen where it's like, you know, cause then what goes through my mind is because I'm, I always, I'm super emotional is, you know, is the, is the person that's doing this to me going to be mad if I stop it? Are they going to be mad if I tell them they're going too far? Are they going to be mad if I'm just like, Hey, I've had enough. Let, I mean, I'm happy with where we are now, but don't, don't get anything bigger out or don't do anything weird now. It, it always worries me. And even though you have those conversations before the session, you always have that worry that you're going to piss them off. And they're going to be like, yeah, we're not going to play anymore because, you know, you, you didn't go as far as you said you could. And that's always a weird situation. It's, it's about being comfortable with boundaries and right. be, feeling confident that you can say no to someone right. is the main thing, safe words, all sorts of things. It's, I've definitely been in situations where I should have said no, but like you, um, like, oh God, is he going to be annoyed with me and, and stuff like that. You don't, you want to present yourself as the best sub you can, right. but every sub is a human and you have to take that into the calculation and fantasy compared to reality is two very different things as well. Right, for it's, sure. It's headspace. Headspace is so important. And if right. the headspace is not right, right, or the chemistry is not right, it's not going to work. Right, for sure. And that's, I think that's one reason that I always, I focus in, I really started to focus in on mental health. Because if you're not in a good mental space and you decide to do a session or decide to play, that can really screw you up, mm -hmm. not in a good way. It can really mess you up. 
Um, Cause I've had friends who have done that. And I've had, I'm not going to say I was in bad mental spaces a couple of times when I played, but I wasn't in a perfect mental space, you know? So there's that weird letdown at the end, or there's that weird kind of, this wasn't what I expected, you know? And I always look back on those and be like, did I miss something? Did they miss something? So that's why you really have to go into these and be like, this is what I want to do for the next however many hours and or days, depending on the situation, you know, <laughs> you're, yes. and then you're going to, you know, you have to be in that really good headspace the whole time and to have a partner or sir or master or however many are in that situation, understand that, you know, as, as the session goes on to keep checking in, to keep saying, Hey, you still doing good. Do you need a break? You know, do I need to take something off so that, you know, you can feel a hand or a leg again or something, you know? So I think that's one of those things that um, is really important. I think people tend to forget because everybody, including me, gets caught up in the fantasy yeah. of everything. You know, I grew up on Bob Wingate. I mean, I, like I said, I'm Gen X. So I grew up on all of his magazines and all of his stories. And a lot of those were true fantasy. And to have someone to be like, I want that to happen. And people are like, that's not going to happen. I mean, that's, just not, that's not going to happen. You know? can, can, can I ask who is Bob Wengate? I, I probably should know, but I don't. So Bound and Gagged was an American magazine that was out um, from, I think, the like, 60s to 90s. He okay. stopped doing publications when magazines, you know, kind of died. Mm -hmm. um, he had an online presence for a little while, and then I'm not sure what happened. Um, but, yeah, if you uh, – and I don't even know if you can find any old Bound and Gag magazines anymore. I think they got – they just kind of went out of publication and people keep them mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, but you, the whole thing was just about stories and fantasies and different situations. And, yeah, they were – they that was one of the main things in the, in the 90s that kind of really pushed my um, – you know, pushed me into that direction. I mean, I knew I had a, a very – fetish led mine from a very young age but it, when those came out i was like oh okay <laughs> this is what it is yeah, yeah fantasy written like i i definitely went through a period where um erotic uh fiction was one of my big wank ghost go-to's oh, i yeah. can't remember if i still have the link but there is there is a, a page that just only has that and it has a really good gay section as well um, and it's almost it's better than porn. I, I don't need to have the visual. I just I can use right. my brain for this. Right, right. And that's sometimes the best part because you're, you're drawing the own scene in your brain. Like, like this is how I think it's going to look, you know. So, yeah, I just, um, you know, and then, of course, every kid in the early 2000s. I mean, I wasn't a kid, but everybody in the early 2000s. I mean, the Internet happened and then, mm -hmm. you know, online happened and then sites happened and then the whole kind of dynamic of everything changed, you know, because now you have these visuals where you're like, oh, I don't know if I can live up to that. And, you know, so that, that was just kind of played a whole new thing into my kind of whole fetish world. Yeah, you can kind of go to like the younger generation of, of fetish men now. It's like, gather around children. There was a time before right. the internet. <laughs> right. There, you know, there was stuff before the internet happened. Um, you know, so I think it's just, it, you know, it's it's a whole bunch of different things. And like I said, I don't, I'm starting to, if people watch my TikTok, I'm starting to let the fetish side in a little bit over there. Um, I didn't for a long time. I just wanted to be goofy and, uh, you know, just kind of show off that I was a goofy goober and kind of go on through what I was doing. But now I'm kind of like, you know, people always ask, is this truly who you are? And I'm like, yeah, but there's one part that's missing. So you just got to, especially over on TikTok, you kind of have to, control what you show over there so people don't freak out and you don't get you know booted and or banned um but it's 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 fun to kind of let people see that other side and kind of let people see that you know you you can have more than one spectrum of your life and you're, you're not defined by one particular avenue that someone identifies you with yeah, it's it's the it's the weird. I think we mentioned this on a previous episode of of, of this as well with uh, some of the other TikTok people I've had on. Is it's it's that it's that thin line of how far can I go before someone's gonna not like me and re mass report me and you get banned. Right. Um, but it's also it's like at least with my channel, I I try to be educational. I try to be funny. I try to have a little bit of thirsty 
fetish right. outfits changes right. and stuff like that but i've never gone to the extent where you, you see the outline of anything like right. i see some videos do where i'm just like this is not appropriate but then again some people might think me wearing dead cow skin is inappropriate um right. so I've, I've had comments on that and, and and it's it's just it's finding a balance of what you think is appropriate i do still think tiktok needs to go in and put in in an age limit on certain profiles and right. then you only see that if you can prove how old you are a little bit like instagram is is slightly well there's also rules and regulations on here there's certain things i wouldn't right. do on here either um uh, if you want filth go to twitter uh right. exactly you, you, you can more or less do anything on there and they won't ban you well you're not allowed to say bad things about other people they will censor your Tweet, tweets quite quickly. I I I I tried to like talk to us. Uh, I did a tweet about a sub. I was like, I called him a naughty word, and they did not like that. It's yeah, like of course that's bullying. It's like no, no, no. He likes it. He likes right. it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's um. It's funny because I you know people that follow me on all three social medias that I have because I have TikTok, I have this, and then I have Facebook. They're like. Each one is slightly different. I'm like, I, I do that on purpose. You know, I don't want the same stuff on all three things. Uh, Instagram has kind of turned, for me, it's done a complete 180 from when I started it. Um, I started it, I don't know, when we moved to New York. So let's see, that was probably 10 years ago. I started it to help me motivate myself to for weight loss. So that's all it was in the beginning. It was just me going to the gym, showing my updates, doing whatever. And then over the years, it's morphed and morphed and morphed and morphed and morphed and morphed and morphed. And now it's just like, I just have fun. You know, I show people things on there um, because I'm so much associated with wearing kilts. Uh, if you ever follow me over there, you'll, <laughs> I don't wear kilts a lot on TikTok anymore or on Instagram anymore. Um, you know, I do the whole bleachers thing. I do more pants over there. Just, it's mm -hmm. fun to throw people off. You know, it's kind of what I do. Yeah, you, you definitely like one of the ones I remember as colorful kilts. Quite quite a few of them in different shades yeah. and designs and so on. What 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 brought you to what 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 do you enjoy about the kilt wearing? Because I have I, one kilt and I have a leather kilt which I got from that, Northbound in Canada. Yeah, I'm a, I'm actually wearing my leather kilt right now. Funny story about me wearing kilts. So, oh God, I first started wearing kilts kind of off and on probably about ten years ago. I got my first kilt. And the only reason I got it is because I saw a picture on one of those sites we talked about before. Actually, I think it was Recon, uh, before Recon got really weird. Because um, I remember Recon when it was not Recon, and it was actually just World Skins. And then they kind of merged everything, and mm. then it got weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, when it was World Fetish, I think it was called, like, yeah. the, the main page was World Fetish, and then there was all the subsections. Right, right, right. Um, I saw a picture on there of a guy in a kilt, and I was like, OMG, that's really, really hot. Like, I was like, oh, oh, oh. Um, so that's when I kind of started my kilt journey. So I bought a kilt from a very uh, LGBT-friendly company that was in Cleveland. Um, you know, you always buy your first kilt, you really don't know what to expect, because I didn't do any real research behind it. I was like, oh, that's cool, I'm going to buy one. Um, so I bought one from them, which was really cool and it served its purpose. But then I started doing research on kilts and I started really looking into, you know, what they're made of, how they should be worn, um, you know, what they mean, different kilts. And so that's when I really started getting into it. And then I started wearing it more and more and more. And then I was like, man, these are comfortable. Like they're super comfortable. It's like, you know, you don't, especially for a guy, because you don't have the whole constriction thing going on there. Um, but it's funny, when I look back on that original picture that got me so interested in it, he was wearing it wrong. He was wearing the pleats in the front. And I was like, like I want to go find him now, like 10 years <laughs> later, and be like, you realize you wore it wrong in that picture, right? Um, and I really love to just, I love to support small business. So all my kilts come from four companies uh, here in the U.S., and they're all small businesses. Um, and they all support LGBTQ, which is amazing. And I know all of the owners, which I think is really cool, too. Like, I've met all the owners of all four places. Um, plus, it's, you know, there's a really kind of, I don't want to say fetish about kilts, because there is a true history about kilt wearing, you know. And, but there's a, there's a really big fetish for kilts now. Um, you know, especially, like, I have four, three leather ones. Um, a, because they're super comfortable. People are like, aren't you hot? And then I'm like, 
built in air conditioning. No, I'm not. <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, I just wear them. I, I'm lucky that I can wear them to work. So I can wear, uh, you know, every single day, which I do. I'm kilted probably 99% of the time. Only time I'm not is when I do those really strange um, TikToks or when I do uh, the, the pictures over on Instagram. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just, you know, and of course there's always the aspect of it's easy access, <laughs> you know? Yes, it is. It, it's, 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 it's almost more easy access than a pair of chaps, really. Right. Um, so it's, it's, I, I do, to, do have to ask if you wear them to work, do you, are you, are you supposed to have, do you have underwear on? I think. My yes. Question. So uh, the only time <laughs> I, get, like, uh, I get asked it a lot and, um, so the first week, actually the first day I wore a kilt to work, I did not, I wore it correctly. And uh, <laughs> because I sit, like I sit like this at my job all day, um, <laughs> I had to really keep readjusting all day the flap because I was like, nope, they don't deserve a free show. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, work is the only place I'll wear it technically non-correctly. Um, but yeah, like if I'm home, like now it's definitely, you know, the correct way, or if I'm out and about, uh, the only time that I take that into consideration is if I'm going to an event with kids, yeah. um, you know, even, even though they're like, well, you're going to a Highlands game, but wear it correctly. I'm like, there's lots of kids at Highlands games mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't want their, them to freak out and then tell their parents, but I, you never know. I think it's just the situation. Like if I go to a bar. It's definitely not good. It's going to be worn correctly for sure, um, you know. But yeah, that's just that's why I love wearing them. Um, plus, it does kind of make me unique, um, you know. Even over on TikTok, I mean, there's a, there's a whole kilt community on TikTok, but um, it does make for some really fun videos, uh, and, and it makes for some funny stuff. Because my husband, God bless his soul, every time I do one where I spin around on TikTok, he will find it and stop it and be like. That kilt went a little bit too high there, buddy. What, what kind of crowd is <laughs> trying to sit right now? I'm like, oh, come on. So I love, I get those messages just so random. And I'm just like, oh, Jesus. It's, it's, Instagram can be so much fun, but it, it, you just have to be really mindful of what you do and what, how much you show. And, and, and right. yeah, it, it's, it, it's such a great community on there, especially you like, like you mentioned, one of the things you focus on is, is mental health. And, I've definitely had so many interesting uh, educational videos about round mental health. And it even got me on to uh, now, um, and I don't mind sharing this, I got diagnosed with ADHD last week. And TikTok, I already had a suspicion, but TikTok spurred me on to look into this and actually get a proper diagnosis and well, not a treatment plan. I've been living with it since I was, well, a kid. So I'm, I'm high managed, um, high functioning. It's in the mild end, but it's nice to put a name on it, if you could say. Right. You know, and back when we were kids, like when I was a kid, it, we, I mean, I'm sure it was there. ADHD was there and it was, you know, part of the human psyche. But mm. we just called it short attention span syndrome or shiny object kid. That's, oh, you know, shiny. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, all of us, you know, and I'm sure if I went to really go get diagnosed, I would probably fall in there. Um, but, you know, I've learned, you know, over the, especially the last probably 10 years to find things to help me kind of make sure that my brain is focused. Mm. Um, I suffer from I suffer from shiny object child, a lot of work, like my brain just starts to go everywhere. Yeah. Um, so I will plug in and listen to music. Um, and there's two certain kinds of music that just keep me like my mind has been really focused throughout the entire day. Well, that's that it's 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 so important. Music is also a great tool for mine. If I really want to focus in on, on a piece of work, I'll put music on because that oh, helps yeah, for sure. no end. So you mentioned that you are part of the fetish community, but not really part of the fetish community. And you've been doing it for like, um, what did you say? 20 years, 20 plus 20 years? years. Yeah. Um, how, how uh, it's like, how do you feel like, you mentioned that you don't feel like you're part of it, but you're part of it. Can you explain a little bit more around that? Right. Um, and I think a lot of it's just my own personal experiences. I don't know if it's changed much. Um, I, I, you know, and I see this a lot. I think fetish is viewed differently in the UK than it is in the US. 
Mm. Um, it's still very, I don't want to say frowned upon here in the U.S., but it's not the same here in the U.S. Um, I've had some really interesting experiences where, and I know, you know, and this could be just me saying this, a lot of it still has to do with looks in the U.S., yeah. Um, if you don't look good or you don't have a good physique or you don't have a good body, um, you know, there's and they're not the majority, but they're out there the loudest. They're the ones who are like, oh, you're not hot enough or you're not cute enough or I'm not going to do this with you because whatever. And, uh, you know, it's kind of getting wading through all that BS and trying to find those ones that you connect with. Um, I re we haven't had any kind of sessions. I haven't done a session God, probably in like four or five years at this point. Um, I mean, hey, we live in Eastern Washington state and there's not, it's not a big community out here at all. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's then finding the right people, you know, finding those right people that want to explore and really, you know, cause I tell them like, this is what, this is the avenue I want to explore. Like, this is where I want to go down. Um, I've already been down this avenue. I want to go down this avenue. I've touched on it before, but I want to expand on it. And some of the stuff I want to do, I'm not going to lie, is super intense not only for me, but for the person who's doing it. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times they just don't want to do it or they don't have the time to do it or, you know, they won't get the pleasure in it that what they're doing to me as I'm getting when I'm happy. So I always have to think about that when I'm talking to somebody and saying, okay, this is, I found a couple here that hopefully I'll meet up with later this year or going into 2023 you know, now this stupid pandemic is kind of somewhat over. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say, we, we just started a new one. It's called... Right, Monkey we just started Talk. a new one. And I'm just like, man, this one's even worse. And of course, the new one, and we were, we were driving, you know, this is, this is the squirrel in my mind. The mm -hmm. new one is already being blamed on the LGBT community. Yep. And I'm just like, for jeebus, for, are we going to do this again 40 years later and we still haven't learned? Um, you know, so I think that's one of those things where it's just like, okay, <laughs> you know, it's time to kind of time to fight again. But, and it was sad because my husband the other day actually had a freak out moment and he was like, I'm a freaking hugger and I'm going to keep hugging and I don't care. And I was like, what the, what the hell dude? Like, cause one of the things you can get it from skin contacts and I'm like, don't lick them. You can still hug them though. Damn dude. You know? It so yeah, it was, it, it was weird to see him have that moment where he was like, like he actually had a breakdown because of what he was reading. Yeah, it's, it's, I, 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 that just sounds like uh, there's been, it's been three years of constant being told you can't do this, you can't do that. And I fully get it. And, and, and me going to a club or, and, and having fun, it comes with its risks. I'm lucky enough, I've had the monkeypox vaccine, I had it this week. Right, uh, I, I did a video earlier in the week kind of just telling people in London where they can go. Um, Guy Hospital has been handing them out. You can go like, just no appointments, just walk in. They've unfortunately run out today, so they don't have any more of them. But it just shows you the community is on it. Like, right. they used, like they were in the 80s, we are on it because yet again, we're getting blamed for this. And right. it's being called a sexual transmitted disease. It's not sexually transmitted, it's contact. No. Uh, of course, there's a lot of contact in sex. So, of right. course, it's, it's around sex, of course. But it's not fun. And, and a lot of people are now realizing that, yes, in some cases, having monkeypox is not necessarily a big deal. You get a couple of sores and then you're over it. But then right. there's the other side of it when you get it really bad and it's around your bottom, you can't go to the bathroom, people getting in their mouths so they can't eat. Um, so we've heard really, really bad situations. We had the first confirmed case this week in Spain, I think, that died from it. But it has to be see, say, said he had lymphoma and uh, immune suppressed. So there was right. reasons for it, of course, very sad but right. it has happened. So it is very serious and we should take it serious, but it's not just the gay community and it will jump over to other communities if we don't stop it in our, in our own first. Right. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to go on, no, it's all good. on that, but it is so important to talk about because right. like you say, we, we're getting blamed for it. And 
I'm, I'm seeing, was it San Francisco that's kind of went into emergency um, uh, right. DEFCON 4 because of it. They had 250 cases here. We have maybe 2,000 cases and we're still fucking doing nothing. Right, right. <laughs> and it's crazy. And it's, it's funny because I remember a couple months back after Darklands, because they're, they're kind of tying that as the epicenter, that mm -hmm. Darklands was kind of the epicenter of this breakout. And it's funny because I remember seeing posts come out like a couple of days after it, and they were that you could see it from Darklands themselves and from other people that went. They're like, "We think there might have been an outbreak here. Please be careful. Please be tested." So they knew like right away that you know what one person may have come in there, not told anybody, and then did what they were going to do. I mean, it's Darklands. What are you going to you're going to do stuff there? Yeah. You know, and I think they took enough responsibility. But I think now it's like people just need to educate themselves. And not, I think what scares me the most about all of this is that we're all going to go back into our caves. We're all going to stop doing things. We're all going to be like so much for human contact for the next two to three years. Yeah. And uh, as we found out during, you know, during the last three years, no matter what human contact is and that connection is one of the most important things to have, you know, especially in our community especially in a community that's already divided enough as it is, because whether one of people believe it or not, the LGBT community is so divided, it's mm -hmm. not even funny. And that's where, that was kind of one reason we kind of got out, uh, I mean, not out, but we kind of stopped doing a lot of fetish things. It's because there was so much division, even in that community where, you know, if you're not part of one particular thing or you don't do one particular thing, other people won't talk to you and they won't get to know you and they want, it's just like, why? Why don't we talk to each other? It's it's it is interesting when that when that happens, and we're now seeing um, quite um, here in the UK we have a, a quite a big turf movement uh, against trans people. We even have an organisation called LGB Alliance, which is as much as they want to say they're not, they're a hate organisation, and they're just founded by turfs. And right. they're absolutely fucking dreadful. Um, right. and, and they keep yelling that they're being discriminated against and so on. Well, you're excluding a whole section of your community. Right. Do they have the same experience? No, of course not. But we, everyone is equal and we need to include as many people in this and make everyone as welcome as possible. So it, it makes me very angry. It is like, I think a lot of people, when we come into the gay community, we kind of go, well, I'm gay. So everyone that's gay is going to be nice. It's <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Every, everyone has the cap capacity to be a dickhead. Right. Right. And it's crazy to me because, and I think that's what I really try, and, especially on TikTok. I don't do it as much on my other platforms, but especially mm. on TikTok, it's like, my one of my big kind of platforms on there besides mental health is get to know each other get to know somebody because realistically i have friends across the entire spectrum of every aspect of life you know it's mm -hmm. something that i'm actually really proud of but and it all happened because of the um this is gonna be weird it all happened because of when trump got elected mm -hmm. because there was a post that came out that said look at your friends list on facebook look yeah. at what they're consisted of if you only have friends down one certain aspect of your life, you're missing out on a whole bunch of different things. And you're missing out on getting to know people. So at that point, I was like, I looked at my friends list. I was like, huh, it's all gay white males. <laughs> you know, and that's the only aspect in life I was getting, which fine, that's what I am. But I was like, I'm missing all these other aspects. Um, and then I joined um, a brotherhood here in the US. That sounds weird, but it's like, uh, it's a motorcycle club without the motorcycles is essentially what it was. Um, and it was really cool because I came into that group um, and 90% of the group was exact opposite on a whole bunch of things that I was. I was like, mm. oh my God, they're going to meet me in person and just beat the crap out of me. <laughs> you know? I was like, but we talked and we looked at what we all have in common, what our commonalities are. And then we talked about our differences you know, and we talked about the whole straight versus gay and all that kind of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And it really opened not only my eyes, but everybody else's eyes. Um, you know, and it's, it's really important for me to do that. And I think that's one reason I wanted to do this, because um, we've talked about this for a while, here on Instagram, because I have a certain following here on Instagram 
that may not know about this side of me that I mm -hmm. do have a darker side, you know, and that it's okay to have it. And I know a bunch of straight people that have it too. You know, I mean, it was interesting to me. I saw a news story yesterday. I think it was over on Facebook about, um, and I think it was San Diego Pride because I think they just had it. I don't know. It could have been an old story um, where they were, uh, the San Diego leather men were, you know, they were in the parade and they were um, with the leather flag. And the, the thing that the newscaster said, which really struck a nerve, they were like, oh, that leather flag is for LGBT community only. And I'm like, no, it isn't. It is for every leather and BDSM. And it's not just a, a gay flag. It's for every single community that's out there. And I don't know why that just struck a nerve with me. I'm like, but it's not, you know, if, if straight people had, you know, parades for their fetishes, they would have the same flag there. Mm. It's not. And so I, I, there's still a lot of work to be done, but, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it, it, it's the le leather pride flag that that is what it is. And it, but there's no, there's nowhere where it says it has to be just the LGBTQ plus community that uses it. Right. Um, so, so I fully agree with you there. I think we're just bad. I, I think we just use flags more than maybe the straight community does. <laughs> right. That's probably it's why so people have that impression. Right. It makes me laugh because I, I, every pride I do this. And I don't get me wrong. I love who I am. I love being fabulous. But every pride, I'm like, do we need like 75 different flags for real? <laughs> like, I'm just like. Can, I mean, we have the rainbow. And see, I, and I know I'm probably going to make for this. I grew up with the original rainbow flag, just the original, the seven, six colors, I think, that are on it. When they made the change to the flag a couple years ago, mm -hmm. I understand why they made the change. I totally get it. But then I'm like, why? <laughs> you know, and I, because to me, the colors represented everybody. Mm -hmm. And I get that some people felt left out. I totally get that's kind of the, the world that we live in now. But... I, maybe it's because I'm a Gen Xer, and I'm like, we just didn't care. Like, we liked who we liked, and we didn't take offense to something missing. And, you know, and I think that's kind of, it, it kind of angers me that sometimes we, we let these little differences kind of get to us, and then we kind of force those opinions on other people. And I'm like, I, I would say when it came to the, the change on, on uh, or the addition of the progress flag, uh, as it's now known as, it's, it's, right. I reacted a little bit like you. I was just like, why do we need it? And I, this is not my experience. And the original flag covers everything. And, and, and I must admit, I had that like that view to start with. And I was, I must admit, I was a little bit militant about it. But then I was just like, <laughs> oh, Ralph, you should really sit down and shut the fuck up and listen. Okay. Uh, which I did, and then I listened, and I understood where it came from, and right. I was just like, "Oh, there's there is room for both of them." And and actually, I didn't probably didn't know a lot of the history of the original flag, and 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 now it's it's kind of the progress flag is like a thing that kind of fluctuates, and then something gets added or changed, and so on. And right. it's nice to see a flag that has this. It's not solidified. It can kind of change over time, where right. it's, it's really great to see. And now that people have kind of explained to me, the black is for people who lost in the age crisis. Uh, brown is for uh, POC people. We have trans bit, and it's it's just an it's really important. But I I if if I go out, I like having the original flag. But that's just my preference. Right. Um, right. And but there is room for every incarnation of the flag as possible if right. that makes you feel happy and included. Um, For sure. I mean, the, but, the three flags yeah. that I, I always identify with is the original leather flag, the leather pride flag, and then, of course, now I've got this whole, I'm not going to say it's new, but my the rubber part of me is definitely coming out and wants to play a little bit more um, because I used, to, I used to be like a, I would love rubber. Um, I mean, I got... <laughs> I got so into that fetish for a while that when I got new rubber tires, I literally could not. I like I would smell them for like days. I'd be like, you know, what? Yeah. We, mm. um, yeah. So it's you know, it's just it's always fun to explore different things. Oh, absolutely! It's it's put me in a car with leather seats. I would sit there for hours. Uh, right. so, and I think right. it comes from everywhere in our day to day lives. Absolutely. So. Um, 
your Instagram is much more bleachers and big boots and high laces and so on. As someone who lives in the States, the whole skinhead aesthetic, and, right. and, and I'm, I'm gonna poke live here, because I know in doing skinhead gear in the States is an interesting thing to do because not everyone will understand. I right. think the only country in the world that kind of can do skinhead without having that connotation is the UK because that's right. where it started. It, it was a part of the punk movement. Right. Unfortunately, a, a little group of people took it on as right. something racist. Yeah. How how do you find navigating and even educating people on what type of gear you wear? Because I remember when I competed at IML, I included skinhead as one of being one of my fetuses, and I got asked about it at that right. time. So I know it is a bit of a touchy thing. It is, and it's you know I waited a really long time. I mean I've been I've had a boot fetish. How old am I now? Fifty two. I've had fifty one. I've had a boot fetish since I was about ten. Um, so that's always been there. I've always had that fetish for boots. but And I've really had a fetish for the skinhead look mm. probably for 25 plus years because I was like, holy Moses, that's hot. Um, and then I did the research, of course. And mm. this blows people away. And it's funny. I don't know. If I haven't talked about it much on Instagram. In the late, in the early 90s, I joined a skinhead group, but it wasn't the good kind. I joined like the whole kind of, cause I didn't, I wasn't out yet. I didn't, I was trying to find my own community at that point. I was so confused with life as everybody mm -hmm. is in their early twenties. Um, so I joined that group in my hometown. Uh, and I remember distinctly one night they wanted to go to the gay club in Albuquerque. That's where I'm from and bash people. And mm -hmm. I was like, <laughs> no, um, so I actually left the group that day. Um, but I remember a week before, cause that was the first time I'd ever shaved my head. And I remember my parents were like, what did you just do? And I was like, Oh, uh, I just think of it. Sorry. <laughs> you know? And, uh, yeah, I, it was interesting being in that group because I really got to see how people inside groups like that really think, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not, it's not that it's weird because it's, it's like their mentality. Like they were taught that mentality. It's something they don't, they don't just pick up one day and be like, I'm going to hate everybody. That's, they were taught that for, you mm. know, from their parents or their relatives or whatever societal groups they became into. And they don't, they start to really believe it that other groups and other organizations are the downfall of us. Yeah, and I'm like, for real. But yeah, that was the night when I decided to leave that community. But I wanted to, I, I kind of also at that point knew the background of the skinhead movement. I knew that it never was meant to be racist. It never was meant to be a hate group. It was never meant to be something where they cause all this intimidation. Um, you know, so for a couple of years, I never, I really, I wore camouflage. I kind of did the whole kind of that side of the skinhead look. Um, but really, I didn't start doing the bleachers until about two years ago. I was like, you know what? We're going to explore this, kind of get into it. And I've had questions about it. I'm like, how can you wear that? Or, you know, do you hate people? I'm like, no. Um, and that's why I started uh, with both, uh, both places I buy from. Ironically, they're both in London. Uh, um, I really started buying the colored ones uh, for, mm -hmm. for two reasons. I started buying the colored ones for really a fun reason. A, it's the whole skinhead look, but B, a couple of them, and this is why he did them, uh, reference to what my fetishes are. So some of them are just fun. Like the pink ones I have, they're just fun because they're pink, and I like to shatter those stereotypes. But there's a couple that I own that really reflect kind of my fetishes, and people are like, oh. I'm like, huh? Yeah, it is what you think it is. So, you know, um, and I, I get it. Wearing laces of a certain color, especially here in the U.S., cause a lot of problems. And for me, it's like, okay, stop for a minute. Who designated what that lace color meant? Yeah. And really, when you stop and think about it, it wasn't anybody that designated. It's just people making those assumptions because some person, for lack of a better word, with the views they have, wore white or red or black or whatever. And then the rumor mill started going around, oh, this is what that color means. And this is what that color means. And like, 
no. And people ask me, like, why do you wear those colors? And I'm like, A, have you seen my outfit? It matches part of my outfit, y'all. <laughs> I'm real. Hi, I'm gay. I got to match for real, y'all. So, I mean, um, and realistically, uh, if you look at some of those tags that I do with those posts here on Instagram, one of them I do a lot is shattering stereotypes. Yes. Um, because I want to shatter those stereotypes. And I want somebody to have a conversation with me and say, hey, what are you, what are you wearing those bleachers for? What are you wearing, you know? And realistically, I did not think I would look good in bleachers because they're kind of tight in certain areas. And I'm 51, a 51 year old male should not be wearing some tight ass pants. But I got, I got my first pair and I was like, huh, all right then. So, you know, and I love supporting both businesses that I get them from because they're small businesses. Mm. You know, and I, I get it. Small businesses struggle no matter what part of the world you're in. Um, plus, it's just fun. It's just fun to wear them. The only grief I've gotten so far, which makes me laugh, is I'm like, why do you never wear your suspenders up? Fine. I'll wear them up in a couple of pictures. Um, and the reason I don't wear them up is because my moves are huge. And when I wear them up, it accents right here. And like, I don't need people to see that. Um, but I've started wearing them up in a couple of pictures just to get people to be like, okay, you happy now? Uh, I mean, one of my goals is to get to the UK during one of those skinhead events, just to kind of be kind of out, you know, and get to learn from, you know, those guys who wear that gear, not only events, but sometimes I'll wear it just as part of their regular life, you know, I would, and like, yeah. I, I would say the skinhead um, like scene has, there is um, definitely come for Birmingham Oi Fest. That, yeah. that, is, that is the one to go to. People travel from all over Europe for that one. And it, it's so much fun. Um, right. I'm, see, I'm, I, I like doing the skinhead events, especially at Easter in Berlin. They have a big party there as well, where they play right. scar music, like proper skinhead punk music. Right. Not my favorite kind of music. It's not really why I'm into it. Uh, it's definitely right. the look, the attitude. Um, right. But yeah, it, it's, it's such a low attitude atmosphere and people are just there to have a good time. It's right. not, it, it's compared to other fetishes, it's the, the one with the less attitude because people are just kind of bouncing around and having a bit of fun and pulling their cocks out and slamming right. someone's face. And that, that's, that's a part of it. And it's like, my, my, I'll tell you a little story. My first ever fetish event was in Hamburg and I was there to be a tough lever man and so on. The guy I ended up going home with was a, a French skinhead called Eric. Yeah. And he was covered in piss and all sorts of other things. Uh, but the next day, he just took the jeans, put them back on, and went for brunch. Right. Uh, and I was like, really? They're still wet. I was like, yeah. Yeah. He was a proper downright French piggy when it came to that. So that was my first impression of what a skinhead was, uh, at least outside Denmark, where I came from. Uh, I did, used to do skinhead quite a lot when I was in my 20s. Um, where now lever is my main one, but definitely do the skinhead when f thing as well, because it really works with me and the look I have. So, um, but yeah, definitely Birmingham Oi Fest or uh, Eastern Berlin for their a skinhead party there. That's the two ones I would definitely recommend to come. Which uh, it's always crazy to me that, and I this is just me being an American, being like, dang, the skinhead movement in Germany, at least the fetish side of it, is way bigger than I think people realize. Yeah. And then, you know, and, and it's just like in Germany of all places, where it's, it's got that history of that whole kind of thing. But I love the fact that, you know, those that are part of that movement in Germany realize that we're not gonna go down that path. We're going to really kind of shatter the stereotype and break it and be like, hey, this is what it really means. And this is the, this is the background. And so I think that's really cool that, you know, a, a lot of Germans have taken that on and been like, okay, we're gonna kind of reclaim this as something totally different that is what it should be. There is definitely cities and, and countries where wearing skinhead gear is a bad move. For example, Paris, never wear skinhead gear in Paris. You will get beaten up very quickly because that is known as a racist thing. And it, I, I've, I've worn semi-skin gear in Paris, but it comes with its risks. Uh, right. Never wear white laces in Paris. Yeah, you're bound to get beaten up. Um, so it's it's... 
not everywhere in Europe understands it. Definitely the UK is probably the safest place to do skinhead gear without it right. being an issue. Um, I've done skinhead gear in Denmark. That's never been an issue, but it is Danish people's views on skinheads is not a punk thing. It's definitely the racist part of it. Um, right. So UK, some parts of Germany, definitely normally not an issue to do it. So where you, you like to shatter stereotypes, you like pink, I know that. Um, where where does where does your aesthetic come from? You do kilts, you do skinhead gear, you do jerseys. Um, did, that's what you're wearing at the moment, uh, a right. big unicorn jersey um, right. with more pink on it. Where where did that aesthetic start from? And the big white beard, of course, as well. We um, yeah. have to admire <laughs> this beard. I'm so jealous because I can't grow that kind of facial hair. Yeah, this I. It's funny. I I just started growing the beard. Man, I don't even know. It's been uh, t at least 20 years I started going the beard. But realistically, probably the last four or five, and especially since I've been on TikTok, where he's like, you look like Santa. I'm like, okay. Naughty uh, Santa. Yeah, and because <laughs> I have a dad bod now, for real, I kind of look a lot like Santa in a lot of aspects of life right now. Um, really, my aesthetic is just me trying to come out of my ultimate shyness. Um, I have been super shy my entire life. Um, and that was really one of the main reasons, and I, I forgot about it, was why I started wearing kilts. It forced me into conversations that I would otherwise not have. Mm -hmm. um, because if even if we go out to an event where there's a lot of people, um, we went to a, a big event a couple years ago in Gettysburg, um, and I, we were super shy. Like, we didn't really go talk to new people. We kind of stood in the corner. Um, so wearing this kind of stuff and, you know, I love this unicorn design. Um, a friend of mine up in Canada actually made it for me. <laughs> he was like, Hey, I've got this new design and I think it's perfect for you. I'm like, for, for real? So he showed it to me and I was like, okay. Um, and then he's very supportive of the LGBT community. I know I'm old and I only use the four letters and I know that probably makes people mad. Um, I always forget about the additional letters and the plus uh, i always forget about that um, but lgbt is fine as well that's not, i don't think um, anyone gets angry about that he's very supportive his sister's uh, a lesbian so he saw this for me and then he was like hey do you want me to make it in a rainbow design i was like uh, yes please um because as i as i become more mature and more older i realized that i don't need to hide anything anymore i don't need to hide who i am what i am some people might not like it um but I'm just gonna be me and I'm gonna be crazy. And uh, this is another small business that I love to support. Um, you know, and I guess it's over the last year, it's kind of identified as who I am now. And that's why I started using the hashtag unicorn of doom. Because if people notice, he's not a happy unicorn. Nope. He's super oh, angry. <laughs> like he's super angry. angry. Um, so I really kind of equate that with not only our fight as the LGBT community that we've still got a lot to be angry about, but just even in in our sub communities, you know, we need to to fight to to work to be friends. We need to, you know, we need to work through all these idiotic laws that are starting to happen now, and all yeah. not only for us but for other, you know, for women and for Hispanics and for Native Americans and for all subgroups. Some of these laws now they're coming out. I'm like, whew, we're we're pushing back to the 1930s really fast, and I'm like, whoa. So. Um, Plus, it's just, it's unique. And I think that's what this guy really saw in this design. And then I saw in it, I'm like, okay. Um, you know, the whole skinhead look, like I said, was just me kind of exploring that side of my personality. I've loved leather and rubber from, oh, I don't know, for probably 30, 40 years now. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I always laugh because I finally got, I finally went to what a lot of people call the leather mecca in Portland, which was Langlet's Leathers. Um, and if, if, People who have never been don't realize that Langman's Leathers is a very small shop. Oh, it's a very, very small. small. <laughs> very small. They just remodeled it. Um, but And I finally got a pair of their leather pants last summer. And I was finally like, oh, I get it now. Like, <laughs> I get it. Um, and that, at that point, I actually ordered a custom that will finally be done in November. That's how far behind they are, which is good. And what I love about that company, and this is me going off on small companies again, is they perfectly accept and they know that probably 70% of their clientele is LGBT. 
and they're part of the fetish community and they fully accept it. Like they embrace it. Like they don't, they don't freak out about it. They're like, yeah, we, we know, <laughs> you know, but they also have, and I've been in there, they have their hardcore biker community in there too, you know, and they have that, that really kind of sons of anarchy kind of as well. So they're really good at balancing and really good at, you know, catering to both sides and kind of introducing both sides to each other mm. to kind of help build that bridge and build that gap. Um, and then of course, I'm finally getting into rubber. I don't own any, but I've had some on before and I totally went to a different headspace. Like it was one of those headspaces where like, I want to be here like 24 seven at this point. Um, and it's just, like I said, it's just me wanting to come out of my super shyness, you know, cause I, I really am shy in a lot of aspects of life, but because of the TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, I'm starting to really come out of that and really start to just enjoy life because realistically you have no idea. I could walk out of my house today and a semi could run me over, yeah. you know? So I really have to, I had to change my mindset a couple of years ago and be like, just live every day with no regrets. You know, try not to be mad at people. If you are mad at people and you don't see there's going to be a resolution or you don't need them in your life, just bye. <laughs> you know, that's it. That, that's kind of where I'm at with my neighbors at the moment. I've been in a little bit of a neighbor war for the last seven months. And I've kind of got just like, they're not going to change. I still can't, still fucking hate them. But, right. um, but it, 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 I just have to coexist. Um, right. as much, as well as I can. And, but yeah, if you just hold on to stuff for too long, you go crazy. And right. I was, I was going crazy, to be honest. I, I turned into the Karen neighbor and that was not a good look. Oh um, yeah. So, and, and now I've kind of realized that myself and just like step back, let's right. breathe and then just move on from there. But, right. um, yeah, we're actually coming to the end of our time now. It's been really, really, really lovely to have you on. It's been so yeah. much fun, and 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 your personality and your just your way of looking at fetish and and yourself and not right. taking things too serious is is so important. And and like being okay to talk about the darker sides of life, right. um, because I think a lot of people forget that a lot of people when they're really bubbly and and quite outgoing uh, personas, quite bright personas, someone like you and someone like me, there is normally a, a slightly darker side to it. Um, right. Because we, ch we either mask it quite well, or right. it's just we're in a good period. And then sometimes we're not in as a good period. Um, right. And I think it's important that we talk about those things. And it is and it's important. You know, we, I, I talked about before, and I know that you've been the recipient of one of these before because I could tell in one of your videos you weren't doing well. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have to buddy check on people. You mm -hmm. have to check in. And I know that people see me focus on the military side of it, but you really have to check in with people. Um, and I try, like, every, if I don't hear from somebody for, like, two to three days, I'll check in with them. I'll just be like, hey, mm -hmm. how are you doing? What's going on? How's your weekend? Um, because realistically, the strong people, I don't know if I come across as strong, but strong people need it more than almost anybody else because they don't, they don't want people to know they're hurting. And I'm like, especially, and I think it's the same in the UK, men have really big issues talking about emotions, about how they're feeling, about what's going on. We've been taught to hide it, to push it down, that you're not a man if you cry, you're not a man if you talk about emotions, whatever. Um, so that's why I just, I reach out to people uh, and I just find out how they're doing because I've lost seven friends to that darkness yeah. and I, I don't want to do it again. You know, I just, I don't want to do it again because it, it rips your heart out. It does. It, 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 it's, it, you just, I, I lost an uncle last year to suicide um, and that it just, it, I wasn't close, but it, it was still like, did you it's just imagining that you get so far that you feel right. there is no alternative right because there is always always an alternative always right. as long as you always. put your hand out and ask for help right and it's it's it for for me and it, this is where it's become interesting for me i've been able to learn to to see like people's eyes or to kind of read their expression even in a video they think is all fun and happy and i'm like dude there's something wrong like mm -hmm. i can tell 
And I've had people, you know, on Instagram, on Facebook, and even on TikTok to be like, how could you tell? And I'm like, I've, I've been down that path. I know what it's like, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and I just, I, and I get it, life sucks sometimes <laughs> and not in a good way. It's hard and not in a good way. Um, so that's why we just have to be there for each other and build our networks and just know that, you know, that's why I tell people I'm here 24 seven. If you call me at 3 a.m. and I don't answer at first, call again, you know, cause then I'll know that you really need something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, that's everything encompassed into what I do and who I am. And that's that's a beautiful personality, as I can see now. And you 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 spread spread so much joy with your posts and your videos. And it's it's my 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 boy is on on the live watching as well, um, punk. Um, and he was just like he was super excited to know that you were coming on because he enjoys your videos so much. So. But it's been absolutely a joy to have you on um, and, and just share a little snippet of who you are and what you represent and breaking those stereotypes of big scruffy men can't wear pink and still right. be extremely masculine or whatever right. that is. Um, right, right. So it's, it's been absolutely lovely to have you on. If anyone's been listening to this and they really got something out of it, wh where can they find you? Um, I'm on all three. So Facebook, uh, Instagram, of course, is my real name. Um, TikTok is kilted under slash OG. Be patient, though, if you find me on TikTok and you friend me. I unfortunately get so many friend requests today that I don't see them. So if you friend me over there, like tell me on one of these other apps so I can refriend you and then we can connect that way. Um, you know, I'm I'm on my phone a lot. Um, but yeah, if you, if anybody ever needs anything to reach out to me or to whoever, um, know that you're not alone, know that you have people that care, know that you have people that, are, that, that will be there for you and just listen and not judge and not any of that. So yeah, all three of them. Um, and then I can always put stuff in my Instagram, uh, bio to kind of, so you can find all that other stuff. Fantastic. Thank you very much for coming on and have you. a great day. You too. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. So that was Chris being beautiful in pink and kilted. Um, we didn't get to see the kilt, but um, rules and regulations on Instagram and what we can show. I have been seeing all the messages underneath. Lovely comments from you all, and I'm really, really enjoyed uh, reading some of your comments. Um, but yeah, I'll be back in two weeks' time for our next episode. So thank you very much for tuning in and listening and watching so have a great night stay kinky stay safe stay sober so see ya bye